Praise God. Well, I'm going to um, read to you from Psalm 91, which of course is a very well-known psalm, but uh, I just thought it was rather inspiring when I looked at it. Psalm 91, uh, and I'm going to read just eight verses. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Amen. Praise God. Did you know God wants you to be free? And did you also know there's someone who doesn't want you to be free? And if you th think of us in terms of being like a bird, there's someone who wants to ensnare us. So you've probably guessed already, I'm going to speak on that verse that says, He will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. And I just found that intriguing because I just thought, how many fowlers are there around nowadays? What on earth? <laughs> you know, what sort of living is that, being a fowler? Anyway, um, I just thought I would speak about that. You know, I think it's no accident that man longs to fly. Even today, my sister reminded me, not, not, not today, but even nowadays, my sister reminded me, and remember I'm in my 70s now, <laughs> that many, many years ago, she remembers me, she remembers pleading with me not to do it, and then she remembers me leaping off the shed roof. We had a, <laughs> a, a, flat, a flat roof with a, with a whacking big blanket, uh, or a sheet or something, trying to fly it didn't work but I've always wanted to fly I wanted to I wanted to take up hang gliding in in when Jill and I were first married and uh, I went to her with a, a proposal of a really reasonable hang glider that somebody was selling second hand and uh, I could see it was going to wreck my marriage so I didn't so I've I've got my wife to thank tonight that I'm still here <laughs> but you know God created us. I mean, you, you, you read Psalm, well, Isaiah 40, verse uh, 31. They who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So there's, there's something in us that wants to sort of go out and beyond and soar and do amazing, not to be earthbound. All right, just, am, I, am I managing to paint the picture a little bit about how we, we can be ensnared. Okay. Now, it would seem that the fowler catches birds and stops them from flying. And Jesus said, of course, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. So, if there's this fowler doing his best to ensnare us, I started thinking, well, what does he use to stop us flying? How does he ensnare us? And so, I've just got three suggestions here of snares that I think he uses. And the first one is discouragement. Discouragement. How many have been discouraged? Every one of us at some time or other in our lives, okay? And uh, that's one of Satan's weapons against us. Discourage us. Knock the stuffing out of us. The only, I mean, the way to discourage me is to just tell me that there'll be no dinner today. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, perhaps we can try and, I'll try and raise the level a little bit. Jesus promised, in the world you will have tribulation, or in the world you will have trouble. But be of good cheer. In other words, don't be afraid, I have overcome the world. So, to be an overcomer, we need to walk with Christ, because he is the ultimate encourager. Do you remember Elijah, who had that amazing victory over the prophets of Baal? when God sent fire from heaven in, not in, you know, in answer to his request. Uh, just after that, he fell prey to great discouragement. Jezebel threatened him. 
you know, I'm going to have I'm going to have you dead but before this day ends. And we find him in a cave on a mountainside wanting to die. He is a man who's just seen the most amazing miracle that you could hope to see happen and here he is now discouraged. On the other hand, there's there's old David there. When he was an outlaw living among the Philistines because he'd had to flee from Saul, the king who was determined to kill him, uh, he returned to Ziglag, which is the town that the uh, Philistines had given them to live in, him and his men. And he returned home with his army to discover the town had been burnt to the ground. Their homes were gone. Their wives and children were kidnapped. I know Jill has suggested that the only reason they were really so upset was because there was nobody there to make dinner for them. <laughs> but I think she's reading my reactions into everything. <laughs> Their wives and children were kidnapped. David was devastated, and his men were talking of stoning him. So what did he do? Did he throw the towel in? Did he run away, run for his life? No. The Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. Well, how did he do that? Well, I don't know exactly, but I imagine you've only got to read some of his Psalms to see the sort of man he was. Listen to Psalm 103, just a few verses of it. How's this for encouraging yourself? He, he's talking to himself because he says, Bless the Lord, O my soul. So he's given himself a talking to. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who regains uh, your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So he encouraged himself in the Lord. So first of all, let me say, don't be ensnared by discouragement. Get the mastery over it. Okay? The second thing that can um, be a snare is distractions. Okay? You know when G uh, Jesus told the story of the, um, the parable of the sower? And there's, there's different types of um, soil, isn't there? I, I don't know if you've ever looked at that psalm and thought, sorry, that parable, and thought, what sort of soil am I? Well, hopefully we're all good soil. Okay, that's what I'm seeking to be, and, and I'm sure you are as well. But if I had a tendency to be anything, it would probably be one of those that gets sort of distracted by all the cares and stuff that's going on in life. Because, you know, I've had so many interests and hobbies over the years. I'm a bit like a grasshopper, you know, <laughs> or a butterfly. I go from one thing to another. And I could easily become, and I could give way to this. I could get distracted. And Satan uses it. I'm sure you've heard it said that good is the enemy of the best. Jesus said, no man putting his hand to the plough, looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. And this is one that speaks to me. Paul wrote to Timothy, No man called to be a soldier gets himself entangled with the affairs of this life. So the Christian calling demands single-minded devotion. And Jesus said no one could be his disciple unless he denied himself, took up his cross and followed him. I can still recall my games teacher at school shouting, Keep your eye on the ball. Okay, it's good advice, isn't it? I think the way most of us played games, we were all cross-eyed. <laughs> but he was always shouting, keep your eye on the ball. Paul wrote with tears about this man, Demas, who deserted the faith because of his love for money and material possessions. So perhaps you're not prone to discouragement. Maybe you're always cheerful and positive. But maybe the fowler wants to ensnare you by distracting you from those things that are most important in your life. Well, don't give way to that. Um, a third one, and I think this is going to be my last one, is um, the, the, snap, the fowler can use defeat. I don't mean <laughs> defeat. <laughs> but we can, we can become, dis we, can, we can fail, we can fall, and we can be, get a defeated mindset. Um, you may avoid distractions, but do you allow sin to master you? Um, if you fail to watch your life, if you can't exercise self-discipline, then you're in danger. Paul 
uh, warned of becoming a castaway after rescuing others. So get up and go on. Don't, if you, you know, trip and fall and feel that you're defeated, don't wallow in it. Get on your feet again. That's what counts. You know, if, you, uh, if you're in a boxing match, and I would avoid things like that, being my size, <laughs> but if you're ever in a boxing match, they can only count you out when you're on the canvas. If you fall down and get back on your feet again, the count stops. Okay? So get up and keep going. Um, do you know, there's a fantastic scripture which I come across. Was it on CBBS or was it on... Or was it on an advert for toys many, many years ago when I had children who were interested in things like that? It went like this. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Do you know that scripture? <laughs> Why? How come weebles wobble, but don't fall down? Well, it's because of their center of gravity. Okay? Where is your center of gravity? You can wobble, but if your gravity is, is centered on Jesus... You're going to wobble, but you'll wobble back up again. You'll, 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 you'll arise again. So then, don't let Satan clip your wings. Refuse to listen to doubts. He whispers in your ear. Um, because God hasn't finished with you. And if Satan says you're finished, or you're a hypocrite, or you're a failure, well, then he's the father of lies anyway. So why listen to him? Remember David, who said, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. He also said, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. And John wrote, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then here's a great verse. Jesus said to Peter, and he could be saying it to you and to me, I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Now, how's my time going? Oh, five minutes. Amazing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to stop in a moment. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He'll cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you'll find refuge. So, three snares that I reckon this fowler uses against us. Discouragement, distractions, and defeat. But we've got a deliverer. In fact, it says if you dwell in the shadow of the Almighty, okay? In other words, he's just there looming in the background. You're going to be safe anyway, aren't you? Praise God. So... We can rise on eagles' wings and climb above the storm to soar in his presence. Bless the Lord. Okay.